In the hand of a maker, this is a maker knife. And, well, yeah, it's it's just a maker knife. Hello guys, Winston here. I'm a big fan of Jaco's work, and over the past few months I've really been enjoying my maker knife. But aside from being a really cool EDC addition from a fellow maker I hold in high regard, its flat design makes it really easy to customize. I know I'm not the first to do it, but as soon as I got my hands on a maker knife, I knew I had to personalize it. So here's the rundown of my modifications. The most common piece people will swap out is the front cover plate. It's a flat piece that's really easy to machine or even laser cut excluding the countersinks. Shaco's team gave me the DXF of the Maker Knife and I used that to create a basic model in Fusion 360. Now, one of my biggest gripes with the Gen 1 Maker Knives was that the blade carrier wouldn't lock until the mechanism was pulled beyond flush with the finger slot. If you're closing the knife fast, that's not usually a problem. Momentum will carry the blade across the locking threshold. But if you had a partial retraction, you'd have to pull on the slide mechanism until your finger pad squeezed between the handle to lock the carrier. And if you didn't realize that your knife wasn't fully locked, there's also a chance you might stab yourself in the leg. This has been fixed in the latest knives with a modification to the blade carrier, but at the time that I was starting my mods, this wasn't available yet. So I solved this by elongating the finger slot. The magnitude of my change was only about a millimeter and a half, and because I was only modifying the cover plate, it would only expose the slide ring on one side of the maker knife. But that small change was still adequate to solve this problem. I also wanted to add my logo to the side of the faceplate. That would be done as a simple trace operation, so leaving this logo as a sketch was just fine. And that's basically all I changed on the model from the original. But if I was going to create one, I figured I might as well make a few extras for fun. This was a setup that I made that would machine three faceplates at a time. My first order of business in the manufacturing workspace was to bring my stock thickness down to about 2mm. For that, I would use an adaptive toolpath constrained to work above the silhouette of the maker knives plus a little margin. After reducing the thickness of the stock, I then ran a pocketing operation to get a cleaner surface on top without all the machining marks left from the adaptive toolpath. Next, I contoured my faceplates out. I needed to make room for a chamfer tool to hit the edges. Following that up was a boring operation. I used a 1 16th inch end mill to create the mounting holes for the faceplate. And then chamfering and countersinking. Normally, I'd expect metric hardware to have a 90 degree countersink, but the screws in the maker knife didn't look like they had 90 degree heads. It looked more like an equilateral triangle. So I used a 60 degree engraving tool as my countersink cutter. For maximum accuracy, I opted to make my maker knife faceplates at work where I keep my Nomad. I taped down some 8th inch aluminum stock to my MDF table and started running my G-code. Since these were so easy to run, I made a couple extra faceplates in the background while I was working. I would just need to come back every few minutes to change tools. With my light finishing toolpaths, I was able to get some really good surface finishes, at least by desktop CNC standards. If I could do it all again though, I would probably use the 278 quarter inch single flute or even a 6mm Datron end mill. That extra rigidity and surface speed you get with larger diameter tools really helps on 10,000 RPM spindles as I would discover on the Pocket NC several months later. Just for fun, I tried polishing up one of my faceplates and I thought the result was pretty cool, though I doubted it would survive anodizing. Speaking of anodizing, I would be doing some DIY anodizing under the tutelage of JPL Richard. It's something I've been meaning to acquire the equipment to do myself, but using a known working setup really helps you overcome that initial worry of trying something new. If you want to learn more about the process of anodizing, I'll link to a couple videos in the description below. But the general gist is, you clean the part to ensure there's no oil or grease on them, ensure they have electrical continuity to a power supply, dunk them in sulfuric acid for about 90 minutes, rinse, dunk and dye, seal in boiling water and there are a number of factors that can lead to insufficient growth of the anodized layer, like too high a temperature, bad electrical connectivity, wrong acid concentration, oil contamination on the part, too much or too little time in the bath, and then not using a proper anodizing dye doesn't help either. 
it took Richard and I several tries to get halfway decent results. Between each attempt we had to strip the partially anodized coating with sodium hydroxide, which also caused my surface finishes to go a bit hazy. So you shouldn't ask me to teach you how to anodize, at least not yet. Go learn from more successful makers and YouTubers. Anyhow, that's how I made my own maker knife faceplate with a custom engraved logo. But I wasn't done modding yet. One of the selling points of the maker knife was its perpendicular flat faces. It has perpendicular flat faces. A maker knows what that means. Indeed, Bob. That means it's easy to use against or as a straight edge. On one side, that is totally true. But on the other side, where you could attach a clip, that was not the case. Plus, there are some other things I wanted to improve on. For starters, the clip is really only useful for your pocket. It's neither centered nor wide enough, so your maker knife would hang diagonally if you clipped it on your belt. So I would always end up sticking my maker knife in that weird half pocket that some people claim is for pocket watches, though I know the real purpose is to hold Apple products. However, as I mentioned earlier, there is a small chance that the locking mechanism may not be fully engaged when you go to put the knife away, especially if you're not paying attention or if you like a smooth light release of the locking mechanism or tune your knife to be able to flick open, you might end up with the knife deploying in your pocket when it gets bumped or shaken, which is less than ideal. Short of making a knife-proof pocket protector, carrying your maker knife outside your pocket is really the best place for it in my opinion. Nick over at RunCNC has made his own brass belt clips that work great and look awesome, but I really didn't want to go in that direction because it only partially fixes the parallel faces problem. That clip will still get in the way if you try and reference that side. But as a big fan of Tactical gear, I really like the aesthetic and utility of a well-molded Kydex holster. They're durable, resistant to the elements, and I like the clickiness and positive retention they provide. So Kydex Maker Knife Sheath, right up my alley. And having made my own knife from scratch a few months earlier, I'll link to that video if you haven't seen it already, I was familiar with some of the basics of working with Kydex already. I sketched up a design in my notebook based on the angular shape of the maker knife. It would be a single piece construction folded along the long edge of the knife with an integrated belt clip. Kydex is a thermoplastic, which means you can bend and shape it if you get the temperature of it above its glass transition temperature. I like to do this in an oven stolen from the office kitchenette set to about 325 to 350 with an aluminum plate on the rack. That plate prevents the kydex from picking up the texture of the grate or food residue and helps heat the kydex up faster through conduction. Once my kydex got to a wet lasagna-like consistency, I wrapped a taped up maker knife in it and pressed it in my kydex press. The tape is there so that the kydex forms around the knife with a small bit of extra margin which will allow the naked knife to slide in and out freely. The trickiest thing with folded kydex sheaths is the fact that you really need to pull the ends of the kydex and press the knife into the crease of the kydex to get a good fit and final shape. Because the maker knife doesn't have a long handle to grab onto, I had to improvise. I used a sturdy metal ruler to push the knife into the kydex fold while I started compressing the foam. After giving the kydex ample time to cool down, since foam is a notoriously bad conductor of heat, I had a really nicely encapsulated maker knife. From there, it was just a matter of installing rivets around the perimeter, cutting away the parts that you don't want, and forming any desired features. I trimmed away excess material, leaving a strip of kydex for molding a belt clip. Ideally, I'd use a bandsaw to get to near net shape, but I had to make do with rotary tools and belt sanders at home. The downside with using these tools is that you can melt the kydex really easily and have semi-molten globs of the stuff flung at you. Before I formed the clip, I wanted to flatten out the material, making it easier to fold straight. A brief session with my heat gun and then pressing the kydex tail with an aluminum plate solved that problem. The clip was then bent around a ruler as a stand-in for my belt. I applied a little more heat to the tip of it after the first bend was set, and folded in a little hook to prevent the clip from coming off my belt too easily. Around the lip of my sheath, I applied some heat and flared out the opening to make it easier to capture the knife. I was trying to use a 1-2-3 block and other bits of junk around my shop to either act as heat sinks or concentrate the hot air at specific areas I wanted to bend, but I'm not sure how effective it was. In the end though, I got the desired flaring I was trying to achieve. I found that because the finger slot on the maker knife exists on both sides of the knife, the sheath retains it a little too well. 
I needed to heat up the front face of the sheath to reduce the magnitude of the indentation so the maker knife would release more easily. And then I finally had a functional sheath that more or less matched my original designs. It holds my maker knife securely, it has a satisfying clack when you slide the knife in, and the clip is securely retained on my belt. All in all, great success, but I can't help but think the overall process of making this could be dramatically improved with a few small tweaks to the process. While most knife makers will mold kydex around the actual knife, it would actually be worthwhile for me to machine a maker knife stand-in to form the kydex around. That way I could remove or control the depth of the slot in the body. I only need one side of the kydex to dip down to retain the maker knife. On the other side of my sheath where the belt clip is, the indentation rubs against my anodized faceplate more than I would like. I also need to extend the profile of the maker knife body and make it longer so that I can grip it from outside the foam press. That way I can properly pull the knife form into the folded kydex for a snug fit. Additionally, I'm not convinced about the longevity of the belt clip. It's held up for a couple weeks, but I can see it losing its bend over time. Plus, it slides around a bit on my belt so this feature may require a rethink. I might make it a separate piece in future iterations so that I can use a third-party belt clip, but that's something I can worry about down the road. In the meantime, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back soon with more CNC projects and DIY nonsense. Look profound. Awesome. Yeah. It's it's pretty satisfying.